let's get rid of the nits. Coaxial speakers. It has nothing to do with the way the speaker's mounted, so the tweeter's mounted to the actual woofer. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with the type of wiring or cables being used to connect the actual tweeter to the woofer. It has nothing to do with the crossovers or any of that. It even has nothing to do with the overall box. We're going to explain all that in this video, and we're going to demythify the actual word coaxial for you. Hi there, Robin here, and today we are talking about LD Systems. This is their 15-inch speaker. It, to be exact, is the ICOA 15A BT. So what does that all mean? Well, LD Systems is a German company owned by Adam Hill, and they produce a lot of great products. This particular speaker being the ICOA refers to something very particular, which we're gonna to get to in a second. But first, this is their 15 inch model and the A is for amplified and the BT of course is for Bluetooth. Now the ICOA part, that's for the series. And the series is, this is a coaxial speaker. We're gonna talk about what coaxial speaker means. We're gonna talk about what the word coaxial means. And we're gonna talk about why it's so important that this speaker has it. This is the evolution of speakers. We've seen other companies in history, going far back, looking at this concept for a speaker, but I think we finally have an actual product that's going to stick and it's going to change the way some of the other manufacturers do it. Now, if you're in North America, you might not be as familiar with LD Systems as maybe somebody watching this in Europe, but trust me when I say it's a big company with big plans on bringing this kind of product right here to North America. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about what the speaker looks like, why it looks the way it does, how good does it sound, where does the wattage come from, and how loud is the speaker. So why don't we start by actually taking off the cover, taking a close look at what an actual coaxial speaker looks like, and then we'll talk about what a coaxial speaker is all about. And here we go, this is a coaxial speaker. Now the definition of coaxial speaker is a speaker in which the actual X, Y axis, uh, it's fixed and only the z-axis is movable and i'm going to demonstrate to that to you in our next part so i just thought you'd want to see this right off the hop i know other people have looked at this and basically looked at it and said oh it's pretty and it is very pretty and it is adjustable but that's not the most important part that's the bonus the important part is is that we've got our four ports on the outside we've got our horn centered with our actual bass driver and that's what coaxial is all about so this is a nut and bolt. Individually, I can do whatever I want with this, holding this in one hand and this in the other hand, and they move freely around. There's, there's no attachment to these two items. These are two different pieces. And no, this is not a magic trick. This is the definition of what coaxial means. If I take this nut now and I physically attach it to this guy by spinning it on to the actual threaded rod, and I try and move this nut vertically, it won't go or horizontally it won't go i can only move this either more on the actual thread rod or i can take it off the thread rod it only moves in this direction because i can't move it this way without the actual thread rod going up and down and i can't move it this way without the thread rod going back in front then this has to be coaxial that's what coaxial means so you see it all around you. You see it in cables. Of course, that's why, you know, cables are called coaxial cables. That's also the reason why you see speakers say coaxial speakers, because the actual tweeter in that case is fixed on the actual main driver. So no matter which way I move that main driver, that tweeter has a relationship to it. It's always going to be in the same place, no matter where I push it around. It only has to stay stationary in two directions. So let's talk a bit about the amplifier. And let's talk beyond the fact that yes, it has Bluetooth on it. And yes, it has two main inputs, which is input one and two, and they have combo jacks on them. And that way it can increase and decrease the overall gain settings on it. And it does transition between line and microphone. These are all good things. It also has bass and treble settings in it. And it also has four DSP settings in it. These are again, all good things. We've seen these on other speakers. We do have a system output and we do have an auxiliary 3.5 input. This can be used for professional use or for recreational. I mean, if you're just gonna have a backyard party and you wanna have some pretty badass speakers, well, you can certainly get into this product here. 
Bluetooth gives you the freedom to be able to play back tracks when you're doing a live show without having to leave any gear on the stage on. You can just simply use the Bluetooth function to hear and off you go. You can play some music while you go take your break. And if you just want to use it for recreational purposes, the Bluetooth makes it really easy. So it's worth spending the extra couple of bucks if it's available to get that Bluetooth function. So I just mentioned the actual Dynex, actual DSP is going to control the limiter, the EQ, the compressor, and the crossover. Now, why is this so important and how good is that? Well, that's that's great because these are four things we constantly have to monitor on the speaker. So the limiter takes advantage of not just the overall limitation of the sound of the speaker, it breaks it down between the actual three settings in the actual unit for the EQ. So of course, now we have EQ control from plus to minus on the highs, the mids, and the lows but they also put an individual limiter on each one of those. So it can control how much mid or how much low you have and cap that off before it distorts. That's a really good thing. And it does that individually. It allows you to get more actual compression or dBs off the speaker without distorting it, you know, the low or the high end, especially the high, which is very hard to notice because when you're distorting on the high end, you might not hear it, but trust me, the tweeter hears it and eventually it will hurt the tweeter. So with having three EQs on there to adjust, having that high, mid, and low, it allows you to either emphasize the actual talking in the mid-range if you choose to use one of your own presets or you can use some of the custom presets that are built in. It also has a built-in compressor with that DSP. So that means that anytime we're getting close to the limit of the speaker, it's going to take anything that's extraordinarily loud and compress that signal. So we're trying not to distort it again, but we want all the richness of the sound to come out, but we're going to compress it. And they're going to do that with the actual speaker. That's pretty impressive. And the DSP also controls the crossover, which is set at two kilohertz, but I'm going to say it has a slight overlay between the top and the bottom, depending on how the EQ is going to be set up and how the gain levels are going to be put on the actual system. And that's why having a Dynex actual DSP processor built into a speaker gets you a lot more out of that speaker. It's pretty much a performance driven system and that's what it's all about. Now remember, just because we have all of this in the speaker doesn't mean you can't blow it up. Of course you can damage it. Of course you can push it over the limit. It's like having a car that has anti-locking brakes and traction control. They are built around limits. If you exceed those limits, well, that traction control isn't gonna help you anymore. And of course the anti-locking brakes aren't gonna help you anymore something will just go horribly wrong. Same thing will happen with a speaker. If you exceed all the preamp limits and the output limit, you will eventually damage it. So you gotta remember, still responsible for making sure you're within check to the maximum limit of the volume of the speaker. But outside of that, the speaker is gonna work really hard to give you as much power and performance that it can before it's gonna to get to that level. I like that. Remember way at the beginning, I said that, you know, the actual LD system speaker line is owned by Adam Hall. And again, that's a German company and it's German designed and German engineered and they don't BS a lot. If they say that we're doing this or we're doing that, that's pretty much it. They leave the actual consumer, the person who buys the speaker to be wowed. They don't go out and, you know, ooh, look at me, look at this, look at that, ooh, fancy, fancy, do all the dog and pony show, and, you know, then you get something that's just not, you know, as good as you thought it would be. So it's definitely not a dog and pony show when it comes to this particular speaker. So when it comes to power consumption, remember, this is a German company, and they really like to leave the customer to experience the product. They're not one to show off the product will do that for them. So in this case, there are actually no BSing. 300 watts is what the amplifier, it's an incredibly efficient system. It peaks out at 1200 watts. Now I do know from looking at the amp plate inside, there were six amp chips on that actual circuit board, three large chips, I couldn't read the actual models on them, and there was three smaller chips. So I'm assuming there's no BSing, and I think it actually probably is more power. It's just the way they rate their speaker systems where they come up with 300 watts. Now with 1200 watts peak, I'm gonna say after playing the speaker, it is as advertised. It is 128 dBs. That's going to put it in the same range as going out and buying speakers like a ZLX 
or uh, an Eon 615 or the Mackie Thump and also the Alto TS3. I mean, all the ones in this particular price point or the Harbinger. I mean, it's going to be in that range. But what you're going to get probably more out of this than you will out of all the other brands, if you decide you want to go with one of these, is the actual coaxial design. You don't have to spin this around all the time. This is not what it's made for. It's designed to give a full, rich sound, consistent on placement. So you are going to hear this regardless if you're 10 feet away and sitting down, 10 feet away standing up, or if you're 30 feet away, it's going to have the same full sound to it. If you did use these as monitors and you did spin the horn and you laid these out and each one of them was only six feet apart, you would have a steady, smooth sound across the stage. That's how impressive it is. If you want to have a sound that's rich, full, and detailed without any of that harshness between the tops and the bottoms, that's pretty awesome. Like I said, consistency of sound is really what it's coming down to. Outside of getting really excited about how good it sounds, and if I sound like I'm over-enthusiastic, it's me because I'm trying to compensate because I don't find the manufacturer to be overly enthusiastic. <laughs> But it is. It is a very exciting piece of hardware to have. And it's exciting time because now you get the opportunity to go to a store or to order one online and find yourself with a speaker that has a completely different sound than what we normally would see out there. Uh, there's lots of, you know, this is the way things are done. Or if we want anything that's extraordinarily better, we've got to spend an extraordinary amount of money. This is not the case. As all the brands and models that I just made reference to, this is in the same price point you get an opportunity to buy this for an extremely reasonable price. As a DJ buying two of these or four of these if you need or being in a band, you're not breaking the bank. If you've got to pay for the hardware yourself, this is going to be one of those speakers you are going to want to take a look at. Here's a conventional speaker. This is what we normally see. This is what we see everywhere. This is what we normally expect to see a speaker look like. There's a woofer. There's a tweeter. If this was coaxial, we would see this tweeter right dead center and this guy right here, right on the woofer, and it would be just elevated in front of it. That would make the speaker coaxial. What happens when a speaker's not coaxial? So, of course, conventionally. What happens when we have a tweeter on top and a woofer on the bottom? Now, we cannot always control where the sound's going to be. If I wanted to define if this was coaxial or not, well, we'd have to look at the three ways the speaker can move. It can move closer to you, and it can be moved further away from you. At that point, the actual speakers are in relationship in the same place. But what if I was to say, I'm going to keep this woofer right here on the actual table. I'm not going to move the woofer. I am just going to move the tweeter. Well, how do I do that? I now lay the speaker sideways. Now this changes the relationship the tweeter has to you. It's no longer vertically on top of here, it's now off to the side. But the woofer hasn't changed. The woofer is still right here. So that's one dimension that we can move that speaker so it's now no longer in the same space. Now another way we can move it is we can move the actual speaker back. We can rotate the actual speaker. So now if I move the speaker this way, the woofer is still proportionally in the same distance from you, but the tweeter is now even further away than it was before. So that's another dimension where if we move the tweeter and not the woofer, the tweeter is no longer fixed to where the woofer's distance is. So now it takes longer, this is exaggerated of course, this takes longer for the highs to reach you than the lows. If it was coaxial where the actual tweeter would be in the center, no matter where I move this, the tweeter and the woofer would be in the same point of reference. That's coaxial. It's all about keeping the highs and the lows when it comes to a speaker in the same point of reference. So when I actually tilt the speaker back, the tweeter and the woofer are still right here. If I move it to the left or right, the tweeter and the woofer stay right here. And of course, if I move it forward and backwards, the same thing applies. And it also applies when we rotate the actual speaker. A coaxial speaker, if balanced top to bottom, would play the same upside down as it would right side up. Is that true for conventional speakers? This we know is not. You know, We know that we're always constantly balancing off 
either how high we mount the speaker, because we're either too close to the tweeter or too close to the woofer, which is why speakers are built the way they are. It's also why in a studio, somebody in a studio will start making choices, depending where the speaker is located in the room. Some people like laying their speakers down, so this way they have an equal plane across the room. Some people, because of where they have to place it, if the speaker is too high, they'll actually put the speaker on a shelf upside down, this way bringing the tweeter down lower. We see this all the time, and that's actually why some speakers are set up to be monitors, some speakers are set up to be just regular speakers, right? So when a company like LD Systems looks at an actual speaker and says, we're going to build a coaxial PA speaker, they've got an opportunity to have a speaker that can work as a main incredibly well, because we've centered the actual woofer with the tweeter, which basically means we just need to worry about the height of the overall speaker. We don't have to be worried about the reference of the tweeter versus the woofer. And we also make it very easy for it to be used as a monitor, because once you lay the unit down sideways, of course, and reorientate the, the horn, you're not going to have a transitional sound difference between the woofer, tweeter, woofer, tweeter, if you have two or three speakers set up side by side. It's going to be constant. That's why coaxial speakers, technically speaking, are actually better. That's my opinion. I also think it's the future of the way speakers are going to look because it makes things easier for people to use for setup purposes. That's also a good statement. And the design that they actually took on the ICOA, where they basically haven't really changed the depth of the box by maybe one or two inches, but really it's how they utilize the actual cabinet to fit everything in and make a good transition for sound. That's pretty important. Anyways, on with the video, I just thought, you know, we should really clarify what coaxial means and the benefits all that could have for you. Let's talk about some of the conveniences we get when we actually buy a speaker that's designed like this with the actual coaxial setup for the actual tweeter horn and the woofer. It's going to come down to the overall placement. It is centered in the actual box. With it being centered, they then put four ports off to the corners, which is again a nice thing to have because that means any orientation is going to work out for us. But also very important is that the handles can now be in the front because we freed up where there used to be a horn up here and the woofer used to be down here. Now we've got room that we can have a handle on the top and at the bottom. And note all the handles, there are four of them and they are all metal handles. So they're very, you know, strong. So they're going to carry it. And that being said, this speaker roughly weighs 40 plus pounds. And I, that really comes down to the fact of the actual woofer on the actual unit is huge. I, again, I did look inside of this. This whole woofer assembly probably counts for half of the weight of the entire box. Now there is extra molding involved in doing this. This is really impressive because this entire front, which normally would be just a straight line down, is completely contoured and shaped to give off the proper amount of sound. The speaker still has 90 degree dispersion by 50 degrees. That's really impressive. And the only limitation going this way is of course the orientation of the horn. If we turn the horn 90 degrees, we're gonna change the way this speaker is set up altogether. And remember that being said, the speaker does come in white, not just black. And you can get some really great brackets for it, heavy duty brackets that allow you to mount it. So if you need a monitor hung from the ceiling, instead of having it on the floor, you can do that. But if you're a bar or a club or anywhere, a restaurant where you don't want your speakers mounted on columns and in the way, you can certainly put these up and you can put them in white if that's better. Or if the ceiling's black and you want them to disappear, do that. And if you want to even get them tighter, you can mount them horizontally and turn the actual horn 90 degrees. And that's really what it's about. Making a permanent decision on how you're going to use it and thus making the decision on how that horn should be in the speaker. Now, of course, when you get it, it is set up for a standard vertical mount. That's the way they come out of the box. For the cover itself, again, it's got that new look to it, which is that honeycomb look to it. It has the built-in diffuser. And by the way, the nameplate at the bottom, I shall try and hold this up properly so you can get a good look at that. The nameplate at the bottom does turn. It is spring loaded, so it can be any direction you need it to be. If you're mounting it upside down to the left or right, that logo will turn and properly presents itself to you all the time. 
because these are little things that are important. And also, this is just one of those little catchy things. If you wanted to, if you prefer, you can spin the logo around and reinstall the speaker with the logo at the top. So remember, when it comes to the actual grill and speaker, the whole front section of the speaker is uniform. It's balanced top to bottom, left to right. There's no difference. I can choose to have this logo at the top because of course I can spin the logo around, but more importantly, because the entire front of the speaker is uniformed, which I think I'm gonna be different. I'm gonna have it up here. And remember, we will be revisiting the speaker at least a couple of more times on the channel. We are gonna do it as a comparison against one of the other speakers, and we're gonna have it in some backdrops where it's going to be used with other equipment. So again, if you'd like to learn more about the ICOA, we're gonna put a couple of links down below. One's gonna be for the actual factory, for LD Systems website. So remember, if it's available, we're gonna have some links down below to where you can see that. Now those are affiliate links. Of course, that's what offsets and pays for all these wonderful things we have in the showroom. So at this point, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to Adam Hall and LD Systems for making this video possible because without them, this speaker wouldn't have been here today. And I do appreciate that very much. So remember, if you want to learn more about Adam Hall or LD Systems, the links will be down below for them as well. If you are looking for an exciting new speaker and you want to experience something that not a lot of people have gotten a chance to experience, the ICOA is definitely a way to go. If you like bassy music, if you like clarity, if you like sharpness, if you like accuracy and reproduction of sound, the speaker will definitely do that job for you. So remember, having listened to it will definitely enlighten you it's it's a it's a it's a piece of hardware that just reproduces sound better than most in its price category and you probably once listening to it might decide that this is the right way to go for you